Hello and welcome back. So this is a 1.3 Ultimate Nag 52 board. Admittedly, I haven't put the son, uh, the MOSFETs on it. So I want to explain briefly what this future addition to the TCU is, or at least this is the prototype version of it. The shrunk down one, which is currently being manufactured, is this big. And this will eventually mount on top of the board here, and I'll do a guide on how to wire it up. But I want to explain first of all how this came to be and what this does for the torque converter on this gearbox. So essentially, I can demonstrate this with my oscilloscope, but we've always had a problem with the torque converter solenoid here. So ATSG, the Automatic Transmission Service Group, I think they're called, um, in their manual or their data sheet about the 722.6, they said always that the torque converter solenoid is controlled by 100 hertz PWM signaling. This is partially true, it's not actually the full picture, as I found out later on. And because of that, there is a little error on this board, which means that the torque converter solenoid, well, it kind of gets stuck open right now on the current 1.3 boards. And this little circuit here will fix that problem completely. And then also we can get on to discuss this, which is a prototype for the 1.4 boards. And also this circuit here will eventually be integrated here onto the torque converter board, uh, torque converter module here for this board. And as you can see, the circuitry for controlling the solenoids is completely different. All of these MOSFETs is replaced by this one specialist IC here, which is extremely expensive, but it does a really cool thing. So without further ado, let me show what our problem has been. Start my exploration, I think we should actually look at the EGS52 board. So as you can see here, I've run a lot of wires out from various points on this PCB. So for a while, I was trying to reverse engineer the EGS52 torque converter circuit because I knew it wasn't behaving correctly on the 1.3 boards for a while. And we actually found reverse engineering this board that there is a slave control mode that you can activate once you unlock the ECU to Siemens level security level. Thankfully, the security levels actually, the seed and key combo are actually hard coded onto the flash chips. So it was a simple case of reading the flash chip and then finding those keys and unlocking the ECU that way. But anyway, with that, what I can actually do is plug this into my what mad wiring harness over there and using CAN, which connects to my laptop, with this special app over here I wrote, I can actually tell the TCU to actuate the, uh, the pressure solenoids and the torque converter solenoids to any PWM I so desire. And then this way on my oscilloscope, I could have a look at the waveforms to see what is going on here. So the reason why ATSG don't actually tell the full story is because yes, okay, the torque converter solenoid is controlled by a 100 hertz PWM wave, but it actually looks like this. There is actually a superimposed 1000 hertz electrical PWM internally, and then this 1000 hertz PWM for the electrics is actually modulated 100 times per second in what I would say would be buckets. So if you will, each bucket is like a little charge of pressure which is being sent and this goes into the hydraulic valve body. I don't understand exactly how it works in the hydraulic side, but point is, the torque converter solenoid electrical system works really differently. The, each PWM phase is actually three specific distinct points. You have an inrush phase whereby the PWM is 100% for like two and a half milliseconds every bucket, and then there's a hold phase and then a release phase. Now the release phase is really important because what this does is this drains the torque converter solenoid of any energy that's left inside its magnetic coil instantly, causing it to close. The problem with the 1.3 boards is that this did not occur. So you would cut power to the torque converter solenoid by just closing the MOSFET on this board here, and the solenoid would remain open for a little duration of time. But this is enough duration of time that the solenoid sticks open past a certain PWM that I'm sending on the 1.3 boards. So what would happen when you're actually driving the car is the torque converter would be off, then the pressure would start to increase, hence PWM would increase. PWM increases a little bit, nothing much happens. Okay, pressure starts to build up a little bit. And then all of a sudden, bam, the torque converter solenoid is stuck fully open because it can't close anymore, and now you're at max pressure. So the torque converter system on the 1.3 boards could not actually control the solenoid correctly. As a result, one common issue that a lot of people kept reporting is that it would slam shut. And this was bothering me for ages upon ages upon ages as to why it's doing this. 
Then this is when we found the slave control mode on the EGS-52 modules and I started probing and I took these waveform snapshots and then this is how we realized that the circuit is actually completely different to how we thought and the ATSG manual is slightly incorrect so this was a really cool find. So then anyway, when I was in Germany this winter time, I sat down with some colleagues of mine at work and we reverse engineered how this circuit works. I'll throw a picture of it up on the screen now. So all that this circuit actually does is it now has two inputs rather than one. One powers the torque converter solenoid PWM electrics. So that's like normal, that's like this MOSFET up here. But then you have a second input from the, C from the CPU. I should point on the 1.3 boards um, from a CPU, which goes to a second MOSFET, which when activated forces the dis which when deactivated forces the discharge of the torque converter solenoid. So let me show you my test setup. So this right here is my little test setup that I've got going right now. So as you can see, what I've done is I've actually made it so that with some simple wiring, hopefully in future people with, which own the 1.3 boards can actually hook this module up a bit the smaller smaller design which I have on paper here which looks like this it's a little bit smaller than the prototype I just needed the space here so I could test each component now I know it works the real product will be this big and it will look like this so what will happen so I currently have here three lines on the oscilloscope I have the yellow line here is the voltage at the torque converter solenoid coming into the TCU. So remember all the solenoids here are high powered so they have a common 12 volt or common power supply going directly to the solenoids and then the, they are low side switched. So this comes into this MOSFET here and then I have one probe here so this is going to be the blue line on the oscilloscope and this is connected to the MOSFET pin of a torque converter solenoid, so MOS1. Uh, this is the original pin of the original torque converter solenoid uh, MOSFET on the 1.3 board. And then as an additional input, we have here, this is the yellow probe, that goes to this purple line on the oscilloscope. And what this guy does is it connects to the GPIO pin, which I have actually left open for anyone to use how they wish on the boards. So now in the configuration app, there's now a special option for the 1.3 boards to use this for the torque converter set, Zena setup. And this goes to TCC MOS2 input pin on this board. And this forces, when unpowered, forces the discharge of a torque converter solenoid. When powered, it holds the torque converter solenoid open. So, with my slave app, let's start by increasing the PWM a little bit so I can show you the waveform. So, word of warning, this is going to get a little bit loud because that solenoid there, the torque converter one, is not quiet at all now. Let's move the torque converter solenoid a little bit and now you start hearing it buzzing, right? So now you can see here, this is just with the inrush phase, and you can see the spike in the torque converter solenoid here as it's being discharged and then applied and then discharged and then off. Here you can see the PWM signal to the MOSFET so you can see here it's on, off, on, off. And this is the Zener, the special pin that's new. You can see it's off when this is on, and then it turns on to discharge the solenoid. So now if I increase the PWM even further, now you can see here that during the whole phase, the lines are still pretty flat, and then as soon as the discharge happens here, it turns off. Let me just pause this. There you go. Okay, so now if we have a look at these waveforms and I can say vertical, we can reduce that. There we go, that's a bit easier to see. So you can see here where it's holding the solenoid open and then here where this turns on to discharge it, discharge, and then back on to fully on to force it open, hold, and then off. So now this solenoid is working correctly, and I can show that by, you can listen to it. And now as you can hear, as I move the PWM all the way, almost until the end you can hear it opening and closing. And then off. Whereas before, let me just quickly switch this to the 1.3 setup and I'll show you what it was doing before. This is before. So now, you see here, it's, you can start hearing the solenoid, and then you hear a bit more. And then here, it kind of sticks open. Anything past halfway, it just sticks on. Okay. 
And then let me actually just quickly change this. So watch this. I can go to GPIO usage, say that it's used for TCC Zener cutoff with mod PCB, and then look at the waveform instantly change. So yeah, it's pretty cool because this way you can revert to the old behavior if you feel like it. There you go, old behavior. And then GPIO usage TCC Zener, and then write. And then there's the new behavior again. So, old behavior, and then change to TCC, new behavior. So yeah, just a very quick video to actually demonstrate that I am still working on this. And as for the 1.4 boards, well, I plan to go with mostly this same design that I currently have here for the prototype version. This is a special uh, Infineon IC which does constant current, so this is like much more accurate than the 1.3 board system whereby the ESP itself is measuring the current being drawn by each of the pressure solenoids um, using that uh, shunt resistor. Instead it's all handled internally on this chip and actually the ESP just over SPI has to tell this what current it wants for each channel, i.e. each solenoid, and this handles it itself. Because right now the software algorithm for current, uh, constant current control on the 1.3 volts is actually surprisingly complex, like it's quite long. So, yeah. I'm quite happy with how the 1.4 boards are going, but now that I know that this TCC Zener mod works on the 1.3 boards, I will be incorporating that circuit onto this section of the 1.4 boards, along with a couple minor tweaks like changing the high side switch for the uh, global emergency shutoff for the solenoids. So yeah, the 1.4 boards contains a little bit more safety features. So say for instance, if one of the solenoids were to short, uh, one of the MOSFETs was to short open, this guy on the 1.4 board will shut off to cut power to all the solenoids on the board at once, which stops potentially any um, fuse blowing. So yeah, I'm very happy with how the project is going. I mean, there's loads of other software tweaks as well that I've been working on. Like literally a couple of days ago, we found out that there's a special case handling for Jeep when it comes to knowing the transfer case ratio. For some reason, Mercedes in their infinite wisdom decided that on the Mercedes car, there's a specific ECU called VG, which deals with the transfer case and broadcasting the ratio it's currently in. But on Jeeps, it broadcasts by the engine ECU on a completely different CAN frame. So yeah, there's lots of really weird fixes going on. I've also had to completely re-engineer the torque model for the whole gearbox so that it's more compatible with all the different CAN layers. So you've got the 1998 uh, CAN layer found on the 210, then the 2000 CAN layer found on the 211, and then the 2008 and newer CAN layer found on the 204. There's also fixes that I'm working on for the ISM selector. So I found with the 216 CL65 AMG and the 221 S600 that they actually have the five-speed gearbox, and they also have the steering wheel selector module, and this in itself is a whole pain because EGS, so my TCU, now needs to tell the sh the automatic shifting lever on the gearbox what position it wants. So a whole new world of like completely different code to handle like all kinds of different cases, but it's all under one integrated firmware, which is all of that code there. I think we're something at like 30,000 lines now of code on this whole project, so it's huge. But yeah, I'm just happy developing and I plan to do a video when I get my car back from the body shop um, demonstrating the new shifting mechanics because we now have two types of shifting. We have crossover and clutch release shifting, so that's fun, just like the original EGS. Again, reverse engineered off this guy. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one and uh, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.